If I told you that a traditional pension fund can achieve a solid financial return by having a real positive impact on climate, would you believe me? What if I also told you that this pension fund can venture into markets that often are considered too risky? Would you believe that is possible? It is possible, in fact. This is the case with our investments in renewable energy in developing countries. And that is very good news, because we need to turn billions of investments into trillions in order to reach the goals in the Paris uh, Agreement. And what KLP has done can hopefully inspire other investors to do something similar. I'll share with you today the benefits of private sector investments going hand in hand with public sector investments or blended finance, as it is called. I want to show you some of the projects that we are proud to be a part of in order to describe the impacts of what we are doing. Let us start in Mozambique, which is one of the poorest countries in the world, where only 31% of the population have access to electricity. Here, we helped finance Mokuba, Mozambique's first large-scale solar plant. It provides enough electricity to serve the equivalent of 175,000 households. Besides reducing emissions by around 80,000 tons annually, it helps to stabilize the grid and the energy supply in northern Mozambique. At the peak of construction, the project employed 1,500 people, of which most were hired locally. And although it currently employs only a handful of people, the wider impact on the economy is significant. As people and businesses get a better, more stable access to energy, productivity improves and new businesses are established, leading to more jobs and economic growth. Now, let us turn to the Lake Turkana wind farm in Kenya. This provides almost 17% of Kenya's installed energy generation capacity, thereby avoiding production from fuel oil plants, and providing reliable and low-cost electricity. Also, the project has had additional positive impacts. A new road has reduced time and costs of travel and has helped to increase trade in the region. These are investments that we have done uh, with Norfund, the Norwegian Investment Fund for Developing Countries. We have started an investment company together, which make direct investments in projects. And although Norfund uh, is uh, publicly owned, it is commercially oriented. And thanks to their expertise, operational setup, and thanks to their way of structuring projects, KLP found a way to enter these markets that wasn't feasible before and wasn't feasible on our own. The return has also been attractive. A 12% annual return so far. This has eased our initial hesitations and has encouraged us to continue building this portfolio. We all know that renewable energy plays a critical role in achieving the goal in the Paris uh, Agreement. We must reduce the use of coal as an energy source. At KLP, we have already become coal free and have focused more of our attention uh, on the opportunities that comes with fighting climate change. According to the OECD, uh, we need 6.9 trillion US dollars in infrastructure investments every year to 2030 to meet the goals of the Paris Agreement. Contrast this to about 300 billion dollars, which is the figure for the current annual investments in renewables. There is absolutely no doubt that we need more renewable energy, especially in developing countries where we expect the largest growth in needed capacity and where we now have the chance to replace the coal plants. The question is how this can be financed at the pace and at the scale needed. Again, we must turn billions into trillions in order to bridge the financing gap for renewables. And private institutional investors can and should take a bigger role. So my message today is that KLP and other institutional investors can fight climate change while at the same time harvesting competitive returns and managing the risks that are involved. By establishing new partnerships and using new tools, we can accelerate the spread of renewable energy. I already told you about KLP's and Norfund's co-investments. 
But there are also other ways that private and uh, public investments can play together. Let's dig deeper in the blended finance toolbox. The beauty of blended finance is that both parties benefit. Public money can be used as an effective risk cushion, which means that investors dare to make investments that previously was too risky, as the risk is now lower. The government, on the other hand, can do more while spending less, as it becomes a catalyst for mobilizing private capital. The blended finance mechanisms have the potential to unlock private money that otherwise hadn't been there. It can be done in many ways, but I'll show you uh, another example from KLP's investments. This is the innovative fund Climate Investor One that financed the whole life cycle of a renewable project. This fund uh, consists of several components with three different financiers, public donors, state guaranteed loans and commercial investors. The public donors are essentially giving a very cheap loan to the project. They are, however, the last ones to get their money back, meaning that in the case the project fails, the initial loss will be covered by the donor. This is what is called a first loss mechanism. The state guaranteed loans help reduce the credit risk in the project and combined with the first loss mechanism, it creates a risk and return profile that also fits a commercial and traditional pension fund like KLP. For KLP, blended finance has been a blessing. It lowers risk and we have found the operational partners that we need to do it. In short, it has given us the chance to get involved in these markets and directly in projects. It has created a win-win situation where we can ensure a responsible and sustainable management of pensions, while at the same time fighting climate change and having a positive impact on society. Institutional investors manage a vast sum of money. The asset owners that have signed uh, the PRI, uh, which is a network of investors and the world's leading proponent of responsible investing, control 90 trillion US dollars. If these PRI asset owners were to direct 1% of their assets under management to renewable energy, this would mobilize financing of around 1,300 gigawatt of new capacity. That is over seven times more than what, what was installed last year. A recent article in The Economist shows that blended finance struggle, has struggled uh, to grow despite its attractive merits. In order to reduce the barriers for more blended finance, public and private sectors need more dialogue on how structures can be developed to suit both parties' needs and objectives. So my call to action is stop financing coal. Public and private investors partner up in blended finance solutions. And finally, steer capital to renewable energy. We can make this happen. And in the meantime, we in KLP, we are committed to continue increasing uh, the green investments year by year for the benefit of the financial returns and the climate.